Now let's move to so-called vacancy diffusion. So far we talked about uh, interstitial diffusion. We talked about uh, self diffusion, which is our tracer diffusion, right? And radioactive tracer because the same element you have is difficult to measure. We how do we get self diffusion? We actually using so-called radioactive isotope tracer. Make sense? Now let's think about the diffusion of a species called uh, vacancy. Empty stuff going. So as I draw here, pure A with A vacancy, and the A atom would jump to into the vacancy and the starting position, final location. Make sense? A goes to the vacancy. And in a way, you can view this as if a atom jump into the vacancy, you can view it as if a vacancy jumps to a atom. Make sense? It's kind of like, okay, A goes to here as if vacancy goes to there, opposite direction. In the end, the net result, at least for this one single jump, is the same, right? It's as if it's the same. So, but there's a so-called asymmetry here. For A, this atom, if I'm going to consider, where can it jump? Most likely, as I draw, for this particular A atom that I'm pointing, most likely it's only going to jump towards right side into here. But for this vacancy, where can it jump? Well, it of course can jump left, but it has equal probability of jumping to the other direction. So you see this, that's related, but that's a so-called asymmetry, not symmetric in this sense. This guy, if I'm focusing on only this guy, I'm pointing, most likely it's going to only one location. But this vacancy is always surrounded by atoms. And it has probability, equal probability to go to any of its nearest neighbor vacancy. So that's why what I said, vacancy is in certain ways similar to interstitial diffusion. Vacancy, remember interstitial, it can go anyway because most cases the neighboring interstitial sites for are for like consider carbon in iron are vacant. Similar as we can see, it can go any direction. So in this way, it's similar to interstitial diffusion. Okay. So similar to the derivation of the interstitial diffusion, if we consider vacancy diffusion coefficient, if we consider vacancy diffusion coefficient, we're still going to borrow this concept. By now, you should probably remember this. One over six gamma alpha square. What is alpha? Jumping distance, and it's very easy to determine for a fixed uh, lattice, right? What is 1 over 6? Let's assume a simple cubic lattice. What is gamma? So called uh, successful jumping frequency. I put a V here, means successful jumping frequency of we can see. Okay? So now, um, remember, this class is about model, but uh, when you make model, you always make assumptions. Some of the assumptions make sense. Okay. Now what, what do we assume? We assume, as what I wrote here, two, two things. We can see thermal vibration frequency and activation is the same as atoms. Oh, atoms is always doing this. Vacancy is also doing this. The intrinsic thermal vibration frequency for simplicity I assume to be the same. And then I also assume what? Activation barrier. For this guy to go here, it has to overcome barrier. For vacancy come back to this position, it also has to come barrier. But for simplicity, let's treat them as the same. 
Make sense? Uh, of course, I didn't assume the vacancy successful jumping frequency to be the same as atom successful jumping frequency. I didn't make that. I only assume thermal vibration is the same. I only assume the barrier height is the same. Make sense? So, this is the vacancy jumping frequency. Thermal vibration and uh, the activation energy. Okay? So, this is our diffusion vacancy diffusion so-called uh, formula. 1 over 6 gamma V alpha square. And we said gamma V, the vacancy successful jumping frequency is these two. Okay? And then, I'm, put, I'm going to plug the number in. 1 over 6, I keep alpha square. I keep in between its mu times this exponential term. Okay? I'm going to rearrange. Put 1 over 6 alpha square. I combine alpha square and uh, mu together, and then I would have the exponential term. And that exponential term I separate into similar entropy term and uh, enthalpy term. Okay? And then let's consider the diffusion co coefficient of vacancy of so called uh, substitutional atom or self diffusion. For self diffusion, we said previously, self diffusion for A atom is the same as the star for radioactive tracer. It's 1 over 6 gamma alpha square. And for this case, the substitutional or self diffusion, the successful jumping frequency is what we talked about before. Has three contributions. Mu, thermal vibration, this one, the probability of overcoming the barrier the due to the kinetic energy. What is xv? The probability of finding a vacancy, right? Vacancy fraction. Okay. And then, do you see if I combine mu and this exponential term together, I would have, compare with here, gamma V times XV. Okay. What does gamma here mean? Gamma here is from this equation. It's for so-called substitutional diffusion, which is actually for self or radioactive tracer. For that uh, radioactive tracer, what's the successful jumping frequency? What is gamma V? It's a vacancy, successful jumping frequency. Those two successful jumping frequency is related by a factor of vacancy concentration, a fraction, molar fraction. Okay? So, Typically, vacancy molar fraction is a small number, much less than 1 or much greater than 1. XV. Typically, it's much greater than 1 or much smaller than 1. Vacancy molar fraction. Out of one mole of atoms, how many will be vacant? Very small, right? Typically very small. At melting point, we said it's roughly 1 in 10,000 is a vacant. Something like that. So, which means this number, this successful jumping frequency for radioactive tracer would be much, much lower than vacancy successful jumping frequency. Okay? Jumping distance. Vacancy jumping distance is the same as atom jumping distance. As a result, the self diffusion or radioactive tracer diffusion coefficient 1 over 6 gamma alpha square, we are going to rewrite the gamma as gamma V times XV. Make sense? 
and then rearrange. We are going to put alpha square with gamma v together and put x v here. The left side d a star means what? D for diffusion. A is for the host item, matrix item. Star means I'm looking at a radioactive tracer, which is the same as d a because those two should be radioactive or non-radioactive, they are isotope, which means they should behave pretty much the same, right? These two are the same, and their diffusion coefficient is given here. Okay. And look at here, 1 over 6 gamma v alpha square. 1 over 6 gamma v alpha square, that is our so-called vacancy diffusion coefficient. So we are going to rewrite it here. As a result, we are going to have the vacancy diffusion coefficient dv would, would be equal to dA star divided by, from here, dv would be equal to dA star divided by xv or dA divided by xv. Okay. So, this is what we have. It relates self diffusion or tracer diffusion and the vacancy diffusion. Typically, vacancy is fraction is much much smaller than one. It's a positive number, greater than zero, but it's much much smaller than one because typically a site is not vacant. Typically, okay. As a result. The vacancy diffusion coefficient would be much much larger than the self diffusion coefficient. Okay, so for the same material, it's a vacancy. If there's a vacancy, vacancy will go way faster than the actual element atom. Okay.